Hi everyone, my name is Miss Huss. I'm a first grade teacher at Thurgood Marshall Elementary School in South Seattle. Hi Bullpups. I'm so happy to be here with you today to read with you and talk about books and think about books. If you watched the first video I did with you, we read the first three chapters of this book, An Ocean of Animals by Janine Scott. Uh, this book gives us a little information about animals whose habitat, their home, is the ocean. We're going to read the rest of this book today, but before we do, I want you to think about what do you remember about those first three chapters that we read together. So think about that before we go ahead and review the first three chapters. The first chapter we read was called Full of Life, and this chapter tells us about how the ocean is just bursting or full of animals. It also tells us there's different zones of the ocean. One of those zones is called the coastal zone. This is where the land meets the water and it's really close to the beach and there's lots of animals running around there. The next zone that we learned about was the sunlight zone. And this sunlight zone uh, is the top layer of the ocean. It's not that deep. You can still see the sunlight. And there's lots of fish, and there's sharks there. Probably they're there to eat all those fish. There's coral reefs, sea anemones, and some mammals, like this manatee right here. So now I'm going to go ahead and read the rest of the book with you. And I want you to think about what are you learning and what are you wondering as I continue reading this book. The next chapter is called Twilight Zone. The twilight zone starts about 660 feet, 200 meters deep. It gets very little sunlight. The dragonfish, here's a dragonfish right here, has lights on its body to lure prey to it. That means it tries to get small animals to come close to it so it can eat it. Okay. So now you're gonna take a moment to think about this question. What did you learn about the twilight zone when I just read? So in your classroom, you would have a partner to turn and talk to right now. And your teacher would probably say, okay, turn to your partner and talk about what did you learn about the twilight zone. But I'm at my home, you're at your home most likely, and you don't have a turn and talk partner next to you. So I want you to get a pet, a stuffy, a doll, something to turn and talk to. Okay, so I'm going to give you a few moments now to... Go get your turn and talk partner. Okay, go. Okay, so my turn and talk partner is my cat, Chloe. This is Chloe. So we are gonna talk about what did you learn in the twilight zone? Okay, I'll see if Chloe has anything to say. Chloe, what did you learn about the twilight zone? Come on, tell me. All right, Chloe and I discussed that in the twilight zone, there's, it's pretty deep, there's not a lot of sunlight, but there's still some animals that live down there. Okay, let's keep reading. I wonder if you and your partner talked about the same thing that Chloe and I talked about. The dark zone. All right, Chloe's gonna leave, bye Chloe. The dark zone starts at about 3,300 feet 1,000 meters deep. It's very dark and very cold. Two worms cluster, that means two worms gather. Two worms cluster around thermal vents to stay warm. Thermal vents are crack in the ocean floor that produce hot water. Two worms cluster around thermal vents to stay warm. Unknown life. More than half of Earth is covered in very deep water. Very little has been explored. Who knows what animals scientists will find in the future? So now you're gonna have another chance to talk to your turn and talk partner. What did you learn about the deep parts of the ocean? My turn and talk partner, Chloe, 
left. So I have a new turn and talk partner, this little stuffy here. So go ahead and turn. What did you learn about the deep parts of the ocean? Okay, turn and talk. My partner and I talked about that the deep zone is very dark and cold down there. There's tube worms down there and there's a lot the scientists have yet to discover in that deep water. The ocean's so big. I'm going to stop here right now. There's another section called the fun facts section that I will be coming back to in just a moment. First, I want you to think about what do you what did you just learn in the parts that I read and what do you still wonder? What are you wondering about? What did you learn? Turn and tell your partner. What did you learn and what do you wonder that I could add to my list of things we wondered? Okay, turn and talk now. I learned or I wonder Now we're going to go ahead and add to our list of things we wonder. Okay. So my partner and I were talking and we were wondering, we we're saying, I wonder how many animals live in the dark zone of the ocean. It's very dark and cold. Are there a lot of animals down there? I wonder if the fun facts section will answer that question. Right. Partner and I were also wondering, wonder if whales go down to the dark zone. We wondered before if whales live in the sunlight zone, do they also live in the dark zone? Curious about that, what's down there? So something that we should do now is think about how many of our things that we wonder on this chart were answered in the book and how many things are still unanswered. Okay, so let's go back to the first thing we wondered. I wonder how many animals live in the ocean. And if we go back to the very first chapter, it does say that the ocean is bursting with animals. So there are a lot of animals, but it doesn't exactly tell us how many. So our answer um, to the question is kind of um, answered. Our question is kind of answered. I wonder how fast sharks can swim. That was not answered in the book. There is a picture of sharks here, but it doesn't say anything about how fast they are. So that's something we still can explore. I wonder what giant squid eat. So that was not in the book. There wasn't anything about giant squid. So I'm still wondering about giant squid. I wonder how deep the ocean is. So when we go to this part about the twilight zone, it does tell us that the twilight zone starts about 660 feet deep. And then we learn that the dark zone starts at about 3,300 feet deep. So we're starting to get an answer to this question, but we could probably do more research and find out more. I wonder how many types of fish are in the ocean. Now, again, it just says there's lots of fish. It doesn't tell us exactly how many. Uh, it does not tell us if whales live in the sunlight zone or in the dark zone. Okay, so there's still a lot of questions we have here that weren't answered in this book. 
So we don't have to just rely on one book to get answers to our questions. We can continue to do more research. And how do you think we could find the answers to the rest of our questions? What could we do to find the answers to our questions? Think about that for a moment. So I'm thinking that you all were thinking that we could read more books, right? So this is just one of many books about the ocean. So we could read more books. We could also do some research on the internet. So we could have an adult help us uh, look up any of these questions that we're still wondering about. We could watch a documentary on TV. We could ask an expert. We could go to the aquarium and see if there's a marine biologist that we could ask and see if we can get more of our questions answered here. Okay, so now I wanna go back to the fun facts section of this book. Maybe this section has some answers to our questions. So, fun facts. If a sea star's arm breaks off, it can grow another one. So I'm gonna remember that as something I learned, something new. Animals like seals, beluga whales, and walruses live in the cold waters near the North and South Poles. They all have a thick layer of fat called blubber to keep them warm. The whale shark is the world's largest shark. It gets about 45 feet, 14 meters long. Ooh, that's something else that I can think about as my new learning. Sea otters eat shellfish, such as clams. They smash the shells open by hitting them against a rock. To scare away predators, the porcupine fish sucks in water. Its body fills up to appear twice its normal size. Its spines pop out too. Right. Now, we'll talk about those pages in just a minute, but I wanted to point out in the back of the book here, we have a glossary, which is another text feature of nonfiction books. The glossary defines and tells what words mean that are in the book. And we also talked about how if you have more questions and things you're wondering, you can read more books. And there are three suggested books in the back of this book. They say that you could read The Ocean Commotion, Life on the Reef. Or you could read Colors of the Ocean. Or you could read What If There Were No Sea Otters? a book about the ocean ecosystem. And then they also have internet sites that you can visit to learn more. So this is another text feature of nonfiction books. They sometimes tell us other books and internet sites that we can visit to learn more. Right. So let's go back to the fun facts page. Think about what did you learn here that you didn't know before? So good readers think about what are they learning, what's new to them. Grab your turn and talk partner. What did you learn in the fun facts section? Go ahead and turn and talk. Okay. Right. My partner and I talked about that if a sea star, star's arm breaks off, it doesn't die. It can still live, it grows a new one. And that the whale shark is the largest shark. I didn't know that. And it can be 45 feet long. I wonder if those things were new to you as well or just me and my partner. What else was new to you? Now it's time for you to think about what nonfiction books you have in your house that you could use right now to read and wonder about and think about what you're learning. If you don't have a nonfiction book in your house, that's okay. You can grab any book or a magazine or you can read a book that's online. But the important thing is that we are wondering as we're reading. Okay, So I'm going to read a little bit of this book and then after I read a little bit of this book, I am going to go ahead and write down um, what I'm wondering. Okay. Big Cats Close Up by Carla Litchfield. Okay. 
Big cats are the tiger, lion, jaguar, and leopard. These are the biggest cats in the world and the only cats that are able to roar. Big cats can also include the other large members of the cat family, such as the cheetah, cougar, and snow leopard. Tigers are the largest of the big cats. Tigers can weigh over 650 pounds. They can survive in many different habitats, from icy Siberia to the warm jungles of Asia. Wild tigers are typically orange in color with black or brown stripes. White tigers are usually only found in captivity. That means they're not wild. You can only find them in zoos. The stripes on tigers allow them to blend in with their trees, grasses, or the shadows of the forest as they hunt prey. Every tiger's pattern of stripes is different, just as every human's fingerprint is. Leopards have spotted coats, which makes them perfectly camouflaged in the grasslands, woodlands, and forests where they live. They can creep to within a few feet of their prey. Lions are the second largest cat on earth and are the most social of all the big cats. They live in groups called prides, which are made up of females, cubs, and one or more males. I'm going to stop there because I want to make sure you have time to read your book at home. But you'll read your whole book. And while you're reading, you will wonder and you'll think about what you're learning. And then you're going to have a chance to write down what you're wondering and thinking about. If you happen to have your Making Meaning student response book at home because your teacher gave that to you, you can grab that and write what you wonder in there. If you don't have that, that's totally fine. You may have grabbed, or your parents may have grabbed, a packet from Seattle Public Schools where uh, in that packet you have a Wondering Wednesday journal page that looks like this, or you can print it off online. If you don't have that, it's totally fine too. Just grab a piece of paper and write what you're wondering. So you'll read your book and then you'll write what you're wondering. So think about while I'm getting this ready, what are you wondering about the book that I just read? Big Cats Close Up. Think about that. What are you wondering about that book? Okay, so on your piece of paper, you will write the title of the book. I wrote Big Cats Close Up. And then underneath there, it says, I wonder, right? So I'm gonna write down what I wonder after reading a few pages of that book. I wonder why there are no wild white tigers. So I remember the book saying that all the white tigers are in captivity. Something else I wonder, I wonder how big baby tigers are, are their cubs. I wonder how big baby tigers are when they are born. Okay, so now I go ahead and take a look at what I wrote and think about if it makes sense. I wonder why there are no wild white tigers. I wonder how big baby tigers are when they are born. Now it's your turn. You are gonna find a nonfiction book at your home. If you don't have one, like I said, that's okay. And you're gonna read it and then you're gonna think about what you're wondering, think about what you're learning, and then you'll write your own journal page where you write down a couple of things you wonder. One, two, or three things. All right, thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoy your book and I hope you have some time to write about what you wonder. All right, thank you.